Good morning, everyone. I'm Graeme Ruddick, the Deputy Business Editor at The Times, and joining me is uh, Jeremy Darrock, the Chief Executive of Sky since December 2007. Uh, and as you all will know, last year, uh, Sky was taken over by Comcast for £30 billion, which we were saying earlier is the biggest ever takeover of a startup in the UK, Jeremy. Um, first question, I guess, is you could be on a beach enjoying a well-earned retirement. Yeah. Why did, why, you decide, why did you decide to stay? Uh, well, I mean, for a few reasons. I mean, look, first, I'm in it for the work, right, the business. That's always been the thing that's motivated me. I, uh, I think that the change that's going on in our broader industry uh, it creates a climate that has never been more exciting. If I think of the sort of 15 years of the sky, the 12 years running sky, I think the next few years are just going to be tremendously fun, exciting. I think so there'll, be, there'll, there'll be challenges, of course, but actually I think that the opportunities that presents is greater. So I can't think of a better place that you would want to be if you were an executive today than in this sector, in this industry. Um, I think Sky, as part of Comcast, if I think globally uh, the set of assets we have and the potential across now really the world is tremendously exciting. Um, and then I can't speak highly enough about my new colleagues. I think they are fantastic. I think they've turned up incredibly, incredibly well. Um, you're going to hear, I think, later from Linda Yaccarino. Linda's, Linda's brilliant. And so, you know, the things, therefore, you look at, which is the opportunity, the sector, the culture, the people you're working with is great. So I'm hanging around. How is Sky a different business since the takeover? Well, for, 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 for much of Sky, probably not, actually. If you walked into Sky Central today or into Milano or Munich, you'd, you'd find a business that's much the same. And, and actually, that's because, um, uh, you know, our new colleagues are very keen for us to take the lead. So the basic broad strategic direction of the business and the plans we're executing uh, are, in, in one part, uh, for now, very similar. And actually, we worked very quickly to get through things like synergies and adjustments and get that behind us. Now, what you will also see, though, is, is an emerging set of really big ideas. So if you went into uh, our hub for OTT and streaming today, you'd see uh, many, many people working uh, on um, NBC Universal's um, Peacock uh, uh, initiative that will roll out into the, into, uh, into the US and then you know, more broadly into our, uh, our international OTT platform. Um, we're working on global advertising uh, and how we take uh, our ad spot technology, we combine it uh, with some of the great technologies NBCU have developed and how do we create that into a great uh, uh, global advertising opportunity and how can we exploit that. If you go into Milan where we're going to launch fiber to the premises uh, starting in January and that will be our first entry in the communications market, a deep entry in the communications market in Italy, that is being uh, supercharged by uh, the technical capability of Comcast, who are, of course, world-class in this. So there's, there's a mixture of the same, and then there's the, the emergence of big new ideas that are starting to, starting to, to form. And the great thing about that is that we're, we're contributing that, we're receiving from that, and, it, and it's providing a broader landscape for our people. Uh, to do work that probably they wouldn't have had the chance to do just as a standalone business. Has there been much of a turnover in people? I mean, obviously you've lost Andrew to Downing Street. Yeah. Uh, has there been others as well? Because some people got, did get life-changing. Sure, yeah, yeah. Uh, a bit at the top, um, much, pretty much all of that was planned. And, and, and some of it, you know, some of my colleagues, I asked them to stay on through the deal and just to get that, get that done. So we knew that was coming. Uh, and the great, the great news is we've got such a strong bench that uh, it's been pretty seamless. People are stepping up into new roles. Um, it's refreshing the team, actually. And I think one of the things that, that I hadn't really appreciated is the formation of a new, a new team at the, at the top with a mixture of old experience and new, I think, is a really healthy thing to happen now. Uh, and it's also um, a lot of the work that uh, Debbie's done, Deborah Baker before her, means we've just got such a strong pipeline of people. Um, there's a lot of new opportunity for people coming through. So many deals like this, you see it starts well and then gradually the business can lose its independence. I mean, are you convinced that this won't happen with Comcast and Sky? I am, yes, yes, yes I am. And I think, um, I, I, for, for a, I'd say for a couple of reasons. I mean, first of all, if you actually look at the way that Comcast uh, have integrated uh, business in the past, the way they uh, acquired and then, and then developed NBCU, 
Uh, there's a huge amount of um, respect that they, they, they give. They're voracious in terms of their curiosity. They're, they have a very, very clear view that the corporate center is there to help the businesses on the ground, but they're very much led by the businesses on the ground. So I think that's, that's the case. And I think, you know, look, I think we bring a lot to the, we bring a lot to the party in, in many respects. Some of the businesses that are being created today or the direction a lot of businesses are going to uh, mimic, I would argue, a lot of what we've created in Sky. Now, of course, we're much smaller than some of these businesses, but the idea of a, a fully integrated media company that combines everything from owned and acquired content, world-class consumer technology, um, best-in-class customer service capability, uh, a really, really strong brand, and then the ability to apply customer insight right across the value chain to deliver competitive advantage is really what Sky is all about. So I'm, I'm hoping that what you'll find is you'll find um, a business that continues to change and refresh and renew, but that the role Sky can play and the people at Sky can play will just grow. What about your own job? I mean, you're not a PLC chief executive anymore, so does that mean you have more free time? Uh, how how you more time spend yeah. with staff? Not on the golf course. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, f one of the things I hadn't really realized is just the sort of drag, actually, of, of running a, a public company, how much of your time it just clipped away at. So I've had, a, I've had a lot of time that, uh, that, is, that, is, that is freed up, and I thought, I've thought quite carefully about how I use that, and I'm, I'm really trying to use it to um, spend even more time in the business with people, uh, sp spend more time at the front line. Uh, and then also, I guess, once you've, you've been doing my job for as, uh, you know, for as long as I've been doing it, you, you know, you've got a, the, the, your broader network of connections is, 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 pre is pretty large these days. So, I guess most people that I know that I'll call, you know, they're going to have a cup of tea and spend some time with me. So that, that's a particular role I can play in, in a changing world to go out there and try and make sense of that or learn about it and then bring it back into the business. So I'm spending probably as much time on the road, maybe even a little bit more time on the road now, but doing different things really that are focused in the business. And I've got to tell you, I'm not really missing much of the old stuff. <laughs> so what, what are you learning? Well, I'm learning that, um, you know, today I think the push into DTC is, um, we're going to see the, a lot of businesses are highly, highly committed to that. Gonna, I think we're going to see some really quite significant uh, change. I, I suspect as we go through that change that, that, that things will get reassembled in quite a similar way, but how they're assembled and, and the winners and losers will be quite different. I think people are only just now starting to get their heads around what does it actually take to be successful. And, and what it takes to be successful in the mass of the market is not just about what content you have and what technology you have. It's about the whole process of managing and operating and running a large scale consumer business. Uh, and I think there's a, you know, there's a lot of s skill and capability there that is often under undervalued, I think, in mm. terms of what, is it, what, is it, uh, what does it take. Um, I think we're learning that consumer habits and behaviors, their usages, their attitudes the, to, the, to the future are, are, I think, accelerating in terms of their rate and pace of change. Uh, and then I think um, the third thing I'd say is that all of the businesses I admire most and respect the most, they're all on the front foot. You know, they're all, think, they're all stepping into the future they're not kind of trying to hide from it. They're just trying to figure it out, but they've all got, you know, strong plans that they're really looking to, to execute. So I do think this is a time for all business leaders. You know, this is not a time for equivocation. You know, you've really got to start to push into some of these trends. Which are those businesses you admire? Uh, well, look, I admire, I admire Disney a lot. I think Disney as a business, you know, have always been, you know, very sort of strategically clear in terms of what they want to do and how they pursue it. Of course, admire. Uh, Comcast and, 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 uh, and M NBC. I, I, I grew up in consumer goods, and, and I would argue that a lot of the change I've tried to bring the skies to turn us more into a consumer goods type company. So, you know, if I look at my old, my old shop, P&G, if I look at Unilever, if I look at some of people like Nike and Adidas, these consumer businesses, I think they're highly impressive. And then I think anybody has to look at the West Coast Titans, whatever your view of, uh, of them and say, these are unbelievable businesses. Uh, and businesses, interestingly, that have grabbed market share. 
um, you know, much, they, they've created some new markets, but they've grabbed huge amounts of share from old incumbent players by moving very, very quickly, by creating light, agile operating infrastructures, um, and really by embracing new technologies very well. So those are the sort of businesses I'd look to. I also, by the way, I also spend quite a lot of time with small businesses. Uh, I'm very interested in startups. Um, and um, uh, Danny Reimer, who uh, is one of the partners in Index Ventures, Danny used to sit on our board, so I spent a bit of time talking to Danny. And, and, and sometimes actually getting you know, perspectives from big businesses are interesting, but you also get some very, very interesting uh, perspectives from new, fresh businesses and what they're doing. With all these new services that are launching, where does Sky fit into that? And there's, there's two parts to that question. First of all, do you expect to lose content? And secondly, do you think you will lose subscribers? So I don't think we'll lose subscribers. I think we'll grow subscribers. I think the opportunity to grow customers in all of our core markets and then uh, more broadly by expanding the business is as strong today as it's ever been. Uh, but that growth will come from different places. It's not going to be the same, the next phase of growth will be different to the last phase of growth. And by the way, as we extend into uh, new adjacencies, that's opening up new pockets of demand for us. So whether that be into uh, mobile, whether it be into broadband in Italy, whether it be in the business market, we're going to push very hard into the business market in the UK over the next few years. So I think our envelope for growth is, uh, is, is, uh, is, uh, is strong. I think we are building our relationship in each of the households in which we are today, and I think we have a deeper relationship with those households. And as we do that, and then we deliver that well, uh, we find that the propensity for Sky customers to aggregate more of their services with Sky remains very strong. Um, and then their um, satisfaction with our kind of core service, what they most identify Sky with, which I guess would be our TV service. Um, and particularly if you take a product like Sky Q, is very, very strong and growing. So that, I think, is a good, a really good platform for us. Now, in terms of content, that will change. I think both we will lose some content, I think we will seek to lose content, uh, and then we will do more of our own content. So I don't think that our overall content offering will be diminished at all, but it will be different in the future. Some of that will be driven by us. Some of that may be, maybe others will seek to go in a different path. But, it, but, I, but it's no reason why it can't be better, actually. When you say seek to lose content, how will you do that? Well, you know, always rights renewals come up, and, you know, there's a constant refreshing of, 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 uh, of our content lineup uh, uh, all the time. So I think, you know, we'll probably have fewer, deeper partnerships uh, with, 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 with people. I think the sort of, you know, if you're in the middle ground, you know, either one thing or another, you know, you're probably going to struggle a bit, I suspect, in, uh, uh, in the world that we're, that we're in. Um, I mean, just the amount of content that's, that's available to customers uh, is huge. It, we, we did a deal a couple of years ago where we brought Netflix uh, onto the Sky platform, fully integrated it, really, with our user, user interface. Uh, and that's been very successful. But just think of that catalog of choice that's available now to, to customers and we can present to customers. So we'll be able to make choices around that and we'll do that. And then our own created content, originally through Sky Originals, now through Sky Studios, is going to be a big area of investment uh, and focus for us. Just on the, the Netflix deal, will you seek more deals like that? I mean, is there a deal that you can do with Apple, for example? I, I don't see why not. I mean, that's not to say that we're about to do a deal with Apple, but um, I think we've got a really good template now. Um, that's worked well, I think, uh, in this case, both for us and Netflix. But we have, you know, we have great relationships, I think, with all the, you know, all the free to ads. We want those to, 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 to get deeper as well. So, you know, I, I, I'm opening, uh, you, know, you can't do everything with everybody. So ultimately, this has to fit into a, 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 an envelope of cost that, because you've got to hit the right pricing to make that work. But set that aside for a second. You know, actually, the idea that we are working with some of the biggest uh, producers the, the, and the, the best companies, are, you're very open to that. Why wouldn't you want to want to do that? Just on the free to air, as you mentioned there, I mean, do, do they become less of a priority when you're in the deals with them than Netflix, Amazon, the other people you may look to do a deal with? I would say less of a priority. I mean, I, th I think what we're seeing in terms of a, the broad content offering that we're assembling, there is 
content that is um, sort of more global in nature, probably most of that emanating from the US. And that's always been a core heartland in terms of what we've, what we've done. Um, most of that acquired. Now, of course, we've got a big partnership with NBC Universal that we can, um, you know, we can really take, take to, a, to another level. So part of our own stable, if you like. Um, you've got, I think, then the great content that is provided by all of the free-to-air broadcasters in every market in Europe. And we can be a great platform uh, for the free-to-air broadcasters to get to our customers uh, in different ways. Um, and then I think there is the opportunity for us to then say, how do we then uh, build out our own content that can complement those two things? Um, and that's really what we're trying to do with uh, Sky Studios. So Sky Studios, I, I went back to the Comcast Q2 conference call, and you said on that conference call that Sky Studios wants to develop European stories at a scale that's never been seen before. That's quite a bold thing to say. How are you going to go about doing that? Well, first of all, it's, it's uh, when you start to, to sort of start that, set that level of ambition for yourself, um, you know, you have to be in this for the long term and you have to be committed to it. So we're thinking really about how do we build all of the infrastructure, the team that we'll need to be able to, to deliver that. The second thing you need to do is you need to create the right working environment. I think that's particularly true now because content creators have never had more choice around who they want to work for. So we're trying to think about what's the right environment that means that people will want to come and work and stay with Sky. Thirdly, there's, uh, there's always a money question, you know, which is you need to commit capital uh, to that, again, over the, over the long haul. Uh, people often tend to get very focused on that. Actually, that's probably the easiest bit um, 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 to do, but we're really thinking about that in terms of, uh, in terms of our budgets. Um, and then you've got to have an appetite for risk. You know, you've got to get into that, you know, test, learn, um, find your way, uh, and stay the course. But I sort of feel that's all the things that we're pretty good at, actually, at Sky, and I think we'll actually be, be better able to do that as part of the, the Comcast group. You've talked about doubling investment in drama and comedy. How much of that will be external, as in buying production companies? Well, the, the sort of doubling investment is really the sort of annual ro run rate that we'll, that, we'll, that we'll do. So that'll be the output more than any, anything else. I think we'll look, I think we'll do a mixture um, in terms of potentially investing in companies, taking, taking stakes, but, but also putting output deals in place with, uh, with, uh, with people. The, the question, I think, is how do we deploy our capital in the way that's most effective? In some, in some circumstances, say, acquiring a company may work very well. In other circumstances, it may not. Uh, and a better way to do that will be to put an ongoing commitment with an organization or a person or some talent or a scriptwriter to work, to work with them over time. Chernobyl's obviously been a big hit for you. How do you replicate that? What did you learn from that production that you can now take on? It's funny. I, uh, when Chernobyl was going on, I, um, uh, I, was, I was clearing up my bedside drawer. And I found the original script, actually, which is uh, which they somebody given me to, to Gary, given me and said, "You you, you better read this." Um, I was a little unconvinced by a sort of uh, a nuclear disaster as being <laughs> the next big production. But when you read the first script, you you kind of immediately got it. And um, look, I think how do you replicate that? You replicate that by backing people and ideas. Um, you you recognise what it is that we can bring but you allow people freedom um, you know, to, to, to pursue what they want to pursue and, and, and create really great work. So I think a lot of the skill is knowing when to be in the system, when, when, when to actually be out of it. And then you, know, you put the full weight of the business behind it you know, when, you, when it TXs. You know? So I think one of the great things we can offer people is to say, you know, we can, if you think of all of Sky as a, as a voice, a marketing machine and a voice, we can put all of that behind uh, this particular show to give it the greatest chance of success. Um, and that's quite powerful, because we know Sky as a business, when it gets going, can really shift the market. I mean, that's one of the things we've been able to do. So it's those sort of things that we do. And maybe it's the final thing. This might sound a bit, a bit, a bit trite, but I think it's actually quite important. Um, you've got to be like really enthusiastic about it. I mean, you've got to sort of drink a bit of the Kool-Aid yourself, you know, and, and so I'm spending quite a lot of my time uh, trying to help Sky Studios. Now, I'm, I'm doing it because it, it's, 
for me, in terms of the next phase of my career, it's fascinating, I enjoy it, I'm excited by it. But, but I think when people feel that they've got a real um, degree of support at the top, uh, that, that's, that's quite a big differentiator for a lot of people. How much are you going to pull back on sport to help fund the investment in Sky Studios? Uh, I think it's perhaps, maybe it's pullback isn't, isn't quite right. I mean, look, the sports market is changing a lot. Um, and for a variety of reasons, one of the challenges you see right around the world is that um, sports just generally as a, as, a, as, a, as a sort of subscription business isn't really growing. So it's not a huge amount of new demand that's coming into it. And you have to, excuse me, having to work quite hard to get that demand. So we are, we'll make, we're, we're very, very value driven. I mean, we're, you know, our ability to analyze the value of sport, to understand where it fits in our business, to where we can make choices and where we need to um, uh, keep going, I think is very attuned. So, um, you know, we'll, 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 you know, we'll decide where that, where that is at, 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 the right, at the right time. The good news is we've got such a broad range of sport. Um, that, that runs both across, you know, across the year, so we've got a full schedule uh, uh, across the year, is multi-year in terms of how far it goes out. Uh, our ability either, either to, to you know, not do so much in one sport, say, or indeed to lose, a, lose some rights if somebody else outbids us, doesn't really have that big an effect on the business anymore. What did you make of the commentary, particularly during the Cricket World Cup, about... Um, the criticism of sports for doing deals with pay TV because it can lower the participation. I mean, was that something that you disagree with given? Yeah, I just think it's naive. I mean, I mean, first of all, look, you can't have your cake and eat it, right? You know, at the end of the day, you know, we, it's, it's for sports governing bodies to decide how they want to monetize uh, their sport, right? Uh, that's their choice. That's not for us to do. We'll, we'll showcase what we can do and support sport. Um, but I think when you look at, at sporting success, and sporting success drives participation, all of that, I think, you'll find underneath that, sustained investment in sport. I and mean, that's what really drives it. I'm looking at the Premier League now. I mean, the Premier League has become the pre preeminent football soccer league now throughout the world. So typically, of course it is in the UK, but if you go to every other market, the Premier League you know, has, I think, stepped above uh, you know, other, other, other football leagues, and I think will continue to grow and be successful. A lot of that, I would argue, has come from the investment that we've put in place. And by the way, uh, you know, a lot of the investment uh, we've put in place is refreshing stadium infrastructure, you know, the environment in and around sports, it's helping sports modernize themselves because they've got the funding to do that. The idea of a Heysel Stadium disaster, a Bradford fire, you know, these things are in the past now, and I hope stay in the past because actually we've got modern fit infrastructure where it's safe to take your daughter and your son and, and to experience that. And a lot of that, the credit should, for that should go to the Premier League and to sport, but I would argue that we have played a role in helping that environment. You still if you look at Team Sky, I mean, what we did with Team Sky, you know, which created two, three million people cycling in this country, you know, Part of that was by the investment and commitment we brought to that particular sport. So I, I just think it's a lot more, you know, it's a lot more sophisticated, the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the conversation. And to sort of suggest that if you just simply take sports, put them on the free to air, where often it's very difficult to broadcast them, particularly sports like cricket, and that's going to lead to participation just doesn't really help. You still ended up doing the deal with Channel 4 for the final. Could you end up doing more deals like that in the future? Uh, uh, we could where it makes sense, but we're going to do them, you know, at the right time on our terms, you know, so it's, it's not in any shape, any sort of form of sort of here's a, a new model for what we'll do. I mean, my own view was it was, you know, a, a Cricket World Cup in England was a once in a generational thing. Clearly, as it went through, it looked like, um, you know, we stood a good chance we we're going to be in the final. So we were very pleased to do that and do that partnership. And it was a brilliant, uh, it was a brilliant event. Um, but there were, you know, there were, there were less calls when we were losing the Ashes, weren't there? <laughs> <laughs> Would well, you have done it for the fifth test if the fifth test had been? Uh, we have to wait and see. <laughs> the, um, when you look at Amazon coming into the Premier League this yeah. year, um, what, how do you think that's going to go, first of all? Because clearly they've had technological issues mm. when you look at the US Open. And do you think there's still a prospect of people like Facebook coming into the market? 
or is the peak uh, been reached for domestic football rights in particular? I mean, we'll have, look, we'll have to see. You know, there's been a succession of people who've sought to, to come in to the Premier League um, uh, over, the, uh, over the years, and indeed that's true of other uh, big football leagues in Europe as well. I, I mean, I think the, the, particularly for, for the Premier League, quite hard to stack up the sort of financial case as you look at that, but you know, that's their choice, not, not, uh, 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 not mine. Um, Facebook, I think, have done, uh, probably cricket in India, I think, has been the biggest focus that they've been on, but that's much more of a sort of free-to-air type of sport, really, the way it's executed there. Uh, so we'll have to see. You know, my, my job is to make sure Sky is in the best possible place. You know, I often, often tell the story that when I joined Sky in 2004, I think something like 93%, I think it was, of our customers took what we would call top tier. And top tier effectively was sort of all of Sky, sport, movies, all our entertainment channels. So we were very, very wedded then at that time to sport. And I didn't really like the look of that. And so today, less than half of our, of our customers would take sport. Actually, the bigger part of the business doesn't take sport. So yeah, that trend as we've broadened out and found different ways to grow has been a deliberate strategy just to make sure that you know, we're not wedded to any particular part of the business. Now, you're not going to do that overnight, right? You've got, that's, that's a long-term journey. But having sort of pursued that over 12, 14 years, you know, our business is just very, very, uh, very, very different. You're traveling around the world, obviously, a lot with the job, Italy, Germany, and yeah. the US. Um, the state of the global economy, is that something that worries you? Uh, it does a bit. I mean, Europe does. Um, the U.S. Uh, for now, you know, obviously feels actually quite, quite, quite frothy now. And if you look at, say, the TV advertising market, you know, you'll see a very, very different picture in the states that you'll see in, in Europe. I guess the question is, will Europe re you know, revert to the U.S. and the states revert to to, uh, to Europe? Um, Europe, I think, is hard. Um, the consumer economies are are, are tough. Um, I think that's a combination, really, of a long period of relatively anemic consumer growth. Um, and then it just feels like quite an uncertain place. Uh, and, of course, we're very focused here in terms of Brexit and all that stuff in the UK. But, you know, you go to you go Italy, uh, and it's, uh, it's different. Even Germany is somewhat different to where it is. So, you know, I, 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 I don't see any um, particular catalyst uh, in terms of uh, Europe in the short term. Um, that may not be a bad thing, though, you know, from a, from, a, from a more micro view of our business, because it's going to make it a, a more difficult environment is often the time to push on, uh, and it's often a good time to, um, uh, to invest. Um, on Brexit, has, um, has Andrew asked for his job back yet? <laughs> not yet, no. I saw him the other night, actually. He seemed in pretty good form for uh, that. So, look, uh, you know, it, it's, um, Andrew's a tremendous guy, and, he, he, you know, he should take an enormous amount of credit for what happened at Sky, and he and I worked together with, with the rest of my colleagues, and you know, it was a tremendous experience. But he always really wanted to do something in public service. Um, he aspired to do that. He ran twice for, pol for uh, Parliament. So you know, there are moments when these things come along and you just say, you've got to go, go for it. You know, go and do it, do it with our best wishes. Uh, and one thing I've known about Andrew is he, he's a cool head under fire, actually. Um, so I think he'll be half of me is kind of pleased that he's, that he's, uh, that he's there. And what about the future for you? I and mean, is there any future in politics? No. And how long... How, <laughs> That's how, that question. How long do you see yourself in, in this job? Uh, you know, I, uh, who knows? I, look, I'm, 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 you know, I'm full of enthusiasm. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying, uh, you know, working with the, you know, refresh team at Sky. I'm enjoying working with, you know, my new colleagues. As I say, I think it's going to be a really exciting time to be around. Um, and uh, I'll be, you know, here, you know, as long as people, you know, want me, and I feel like I can contribute and I have my mojo, and, um, you know, I just want to build a bigger and better business, and I don't see any reason at all why we won't do that. Jeremy, thank you very much for your time. Um, next up, we have uh, Ed Williams and Martin Lewis on trust. Thank you. Thank you.